Hello everybody, welcome back to the Rusty Mats channel and welcome to this series on proportion that I have been doing. Now, this is pretty much um, the last video I'm going to do for the time being on proportion. Then I'm going to move on and I'll come back to direct and inverse variation. So look out for those videos coming up real soon. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to talk about inverse proportion. All right, so here we go, inverse proportion. Now, how do you know when you're dealing with inverse proportion? So, well, I should probably talk about direct and inverse proportion. So let's talk about direct proportion first. The graph for direct proportion tend to always be going up in some way or another. It wouldn't always be a straight line. Sometimes it can be a curve. And a typical example of that would be like um, a plumber comes to your house to fix something. That's going to be direct proportion about the money that he gets paid or he or she, sorry, or they get paid. The longer they're at your house, the more money you will pay them. So the graph will look like a, a line going up like this because the longer they are there, the more money you pay. Inverse proportion does the opposite of that. The inverse proportion graph will tend to look something like that. This time I decided to draw a curve. It could be a straight line going down as well. And the way that works is the more people you have for something, the less time it will take to do. So that's what inverse proportion is all about. And the question we're looking at is an inverse proportion question. So let's jump straight into solving this question. It says, a cook can make a meal in two hours. Sorry, four cooks, my bad. Four cooks can make a meal in two hours. How much quicker then um, can six cooks make that same meal? So first thing to begin with, I want to know what my man hours are. Or in other words, how long would it take one cook to do that job? And to do that, I'm going to say one cook will take four times two. So he's going to take eight hours to do that job if it's one cook. So that makes sense because if you have fewer cooks doing the work, more time will be taken to get the job done. But now we got six cooks. Now if we got six cooks, that means that it should take even less time to get the job done. So I'm going to say now, therefore, six cooks will be eight hours divided by, oopsie, eight hours divided by six. Now, eight hours divided by six is going to give us one and a third of an hour. Or in other words, a third of an hour is 20 minutes. If we split an hour into three parts, that's 20 minutes. So in other words, one hour, 20 minutes. And so that's how long it will take. And you can see the inverse proportion happening because as you get more cooks, it takes less time to do the work. But I haven't answered the question, so let's go and answer the question now. The important information in the question is how much quicker would it take six cooks to do the job? Well, four cooks took two hours. Six cooks took an hour and 20 minutes. What's the difference between that? 40 minutes. So then six cooks will be 40 minutes quicker. All right. Did you get that? Was that okay? If it was, please give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't subscribed as yet and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another upload. Is there another way you would have done this? If that's the case, pop it in the comments below. I'm always learning new things with you. But for now, until I see you on the next one, peace.